So, I'm not 100% what chapter we're on. I think we missed an episode to The Sands of Time. Yeah, it's so this 49. would be 50. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't but, uh, get to upload 49. Yeah, we're on to like 53 or 54 now, but I'll let you figure that out, and we'll move along. Uh, so I've redone the map that the other players were on. I wonder if I still have it. Yeah. So I'll put... Actually, this is, this is what the old map looked like, as you guys recall. I just put uh, Troy and uh, David over to it to take a peek so that they can witness the change. You can't see what they've discovered yet. So My but, character token is so small. Yeah, because <laughs> the map is uh, supposed to be big. I'm in a forest. Yeah. And so the others, uh, as you guys came out and you hid, you guys like ran. Let's say, let's reveal a little bit more. Yeah. Found some bushes to sleep in. Yeah. So you guys ran actually towards the river, I think. And you found some bushes to sleep in. So we'll say you guys found like rest, refuge up here and you slept for the night. And so after that, you're like, I feel off about this forest. So like your elven senses essentially coming into this forest. You recognize it physically, but you don't spiritually. So, like, as an elf, you have a connection to nature. And, like, I don't know how much elf history I've gotten into with you. If you know, like, about elves. Oh, very little. So, like, uh, we'll go back to the main map here quick. We'll go to the big world map of uh, Faerun. Let me see if I can pull you over here to where I'm looking. There we go. And so, like, long ago, the elves controlled all of this, basically. Like, they were the first race on Faerun. And so as time passed, other races began to evolve and come along. But the elves were pretty well evolved and established as a culture. And so they started building, like, portal networks and all sorts of cool, awesome things all over Faerun. But as time progressed, their population dwindled. And the other populations kept growing. And there's been some wars in the last century, maybe sooner, I, that have caused more elves to either die or retreat back to their home island. So if you go over here, I'm not sure why the map cuts off at the north. I definitely thought they had like a like a night elf haven type island. I thought that was to the west of Sword Coast. Is it to the west? It it matters not right now i guess it's more about the history lesson of elves once ruled all these lands and they've had to like fall back essentially to a retreat uh if i remember the brit's book correctly um if you sail from the icy flows west eventually you get to it but i don't know if that was a near the north or very far west because it's a book that sounds right in my mind. For whatever reason, I was looking in the top left of the map and I was expecting to find that island. Maybe it's on a different map I have. Let me just quickly. I know I have. Map of Toro. All right. It doesn't really show anything distinct. So let's ignore that. All right. Back to the forest. So. You recognize it physically, and it's kind of ringing bells to you, but for whatever reason, spiritually, this is off. So, like, every forest that you go into as an elf, especially a wood elf, you get, like, a sense of its spirit. And this one is a mystery to you. So you okay. depart from the group in search of, uh, like, something that will give you a sign to where you are. As a wood elf of Faerun, 
like you, you, you pretty much know like how actually how old are you? Well, I feel like I was pretty young. Let's see, because like young for an elf is like sixty or seventy. Like they don't really let elves younger than that like even sign up for the military. So if like you did, you were like a prodigy. <laughs> well, I have twenty eight listed on my sheet. Okay. Oh, that's probably not realistic. That's, I mean, whatever you'd like to do. If you really want to be that young for an elf, that's like a like a baby in their eyes. Yeah, let's just go with young for an elf. So like okay. seventy is probably better. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean that's that's enough to have like basically like serving in the military is like fifty years for the elves. Like you you do it like a little term of your life essentially. So, like, it, however you'd like to interpret that. So if you want to go, like, yeah, 60 or 70, that's, in your culture, that would be, like, okay, you're an adult. Like, you're, like, 16, basically. Oh. Not even quite, like, maybe a bit older than that, because, yeah, you can sign up for war. So, like, you're, like, 19 in your culture. Well, let's go with 125, because I think my guy was a general, so he would have to work okay. his way up. Sounds good. So you've been around, and that's kind of what I was thinking, is you've been through many of the forests in Faerun. You might have even fought in one of the wars in central Faerun. Because, like, the elves had, like, two strongholds left, essentially. Like, Evermeet is their island, and Evereska is, like, their mainland city. So maybe you even fought in one of those wars. Okay, okay. cool. Yep, yep. So, as you make your way through the woods, I'll let you control your token in the direction. So, the first thing you notice is that there is a trail here. And you inform the group, and they're like, cool, we're going to follow that trail. But okay. you still are pretty stunned by not understanding this woods, so you keep your distance from them. You're pretty confident you could track them and find them at need be. So, whenever you feel like regrouping with them, you, you're pretty confident you can follow their trail. But, uh, as a tracker and as one who's hungry, I'll let you control and guide the direction you want to go. So, the team went this way. Okay. And so, I know I sensed like dragons. Um, did they go like to the north of me? So the dragons you sense were, were like in this direction. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go this that trail, way. and they were like, "Okay, cool." You're gonna go this way. Yep. Cool. East, somewhere east, north or, or north of what they are, where they went. Alrighty. So as you're traveling, you do hit a river, and like the woods. Are still a pretty scenic view. I lost my Bob Ross painting. But it's it's pretty idyllic in the forest. It's getting like a crisp breeze is throw is kind of blowing in from the north. And as you like move through the woods, like it's taken you not too long. You're a pretty good woodsman as you move through here. Say so the so that are the winds blowing in my face from the north? Yeah, yeah, nice, nice chill wind coming down here, and it's like northern Canada, but like not an incredibly dense forest. You do notice My, that like uh, some of the trees are pretty freaking monstrous. Oh, pet, like smell anything funny? So roll perception or survival, whichever you prefer for her to sense the world. <laughs> Perception is wisdom. Mm. Okay, cool. Thank you, Troy. And so... That's funny. So Tolsmere does pick up sense. And... Like, she can't quite, like, peg them for you. I think I said yes or no questions for her. Yeah. 
but she like growls at like one of the senses. Okay. Or one of like the yeah, she like smells smells stuff. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I can communicate I... simple terms to the beast. You can ask her questions. She definitely senses something. Um Okay. I'm gonna ask if it like recognizes the smell. He like barks like no. No? I'm gonna ask, is it big? Uh guess I wouldn't really know that. She like growls, she's like Arr, like uh Yeah. Okay. That's hard for her. But she doesn't seem like too scared of it. It's more like a challenge to her. The scent. Okay. Whatever you want to take that. So, like, looking around the woods, you notice as you get, like, a little deeper, this is taking you maybe, like, an hour or so to come and travel to the river here. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit longer. Like, the trees are starting to get, like, quite big. Like, you're pretty startled that you don't recognize this woods. Like, these are some kind of, like, ancient trees. Not like the most ancient you've ever seen, but these are old trees. You should know this mm. place. So, like, roll like a history, maybe. Oh! So, yeah, it's really not coming to you at all. Like, like you recognize, like some of like the type of tree that's going on but you're just kind of flabbergasted this whole sense of this forest is just off to you i'm just gonna keep moving east along the water and see if i find a way is this like a huge lake or what kind of is this a river a fast flowing river it's like relatively shallow but wide okay maybe it is is like illustrating it to be too wide. That's the smallest my brush could do. Yeah. I'm just gonna go east until I maybe see an easier way to cross. Okay. So you can move your dude just like spot by spot for now. So like Tolsmir starts to like get all uh that's her dog name, right? Yeah. Get a yep. little more antsy as you you progress through the woods. Like she's picking up like a trail. Okay. Um, does she see the footprints or something, or is it just a smell thing? It's more like a smell thing. The tracks are kind of obscured by like the ground. The ground has a lot of roots, and the thing is very hard. It's very okay. like little vegetation. It's like hard rocky earth, and then the trees have kind of snuffed out all the other area for plant okay so as you're like kind of told is kind of guiding you over here you see like a fjord in the river like an area where like things could cross sweet okay i'm going to it really i'm gonna like no i can't stealth yet i'm just gonna cross it i'm assuming that you are quite the woodsman like, regardless of what your stealth is, like, this is your native home. And, mm-hmm. like, you're moving adeptly regardless. So I'll just, like, kind of assume that you have, like, a okay. passive stealth always. And then if yeah. we have more, like, more scenarios. Like, you're not with a convoy. There's no other people. This is, like, you and your element. You're, like, yeah. most. I just want it to be known that I'm, like, if I think I'm, like, because I think I'm on the trail of something, I'm going to be moving in a way to not startle it. Gotcha. Like, even more cautiously. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. No problem. But I am going to cross moving. this. Cool. So, as you're crossing this, Tolsmere is still getting the sense of, like, a, a trail up ahead. Okay. I'm just going to kind of Get her to lead me on the trail. All right. So you follow the trail down a little bit more, maybe like another 30, 40 minutes. 
as you fjord the river and make your way down. Like this is all kind of like hill, rocky, con- like a uh, forest. So it it goes up and down in elevation and whatnot as you're progressing through it. But it's not mm-hmm. like I said, super bushy to the undergrowth. So let's do this. Looking for snakes. <laughs> so, as you're like kind of following Tolsmere, she indicates up this direction. And so, like, right. you can move through any of these trees and whatnot, but they are blocking a bit of your vision. Okay, so. It's, uh, ask Tolsmere if it's, like, close. Like uh, a whisper. Uh, yeah. And so, like, he kind of growls and says, yeah, like, we're getting, like, pretty close. Okay. I'm gonna knock an arrow and, uh, slowly move under the cover of this first tree. Okay. So, uh, you're just at the bottom of the tree? Oh, maybe I'll... Oops. Why did I do that? Okay. So. I'm going to tap her and just say, like, wait here for a second, and I'm going to jump 40 feet up the tree. Okay. With my cloak. Yeah. And so you read the move. Say, I changed it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I did see that. And so it's useful every other turn, and it flies further than your walking speed. So it's kind of fun. Yep. Okay, so you kind of, like, take a step back, and you do, like, one, two running stride and a leap, and the cloak just kind of magically... A gust of wind just propels you straight up in a line. And make an athletics check actually is what's is you you have proficiency in athletics nope okay Uh, oh i do actually i do okay then you catch the branch no problem okay sweet you kind of just like it's kind of a shock how much thrust these like wings get off of like just a hop skip and a jump (laughs) and you're thrown to the top of the branch and you kind of and you're maybe halfway up this tree. It's a big tree. Okay. And so, from your perch, Tolsmere kind of like, and then like scratches the the bottom of the tree a little bit, and then she'll kind of like circle it and then crouch low. Do I see anything extra, being at a higher vantage point? You sure do. So there's some trees still blocking your view, but you have a pretty good perch. And you can kind of see past these thin tops of the trees. Oh, that tree's really green. Yeah, I threw a couple of token trees in. Just get rid of them, really. I thought I moved them all. Anyways, green tree stain. It means nothing. Okay, no, no, now it's bugging. It's not gonna attack me, is it? (laughs) It's bothering me now. It's gone. (laughs) (laughs) All right, where are you again? Oh yeah, you're in the tree. Okay, perfect. So you hear (laughs) like a like a fluttering and like shrieking, and uh, roll a perception for me. Uh, Me or you? Okay. Oh. What'd you get? 25. Okay. Nice. So, 
from your tree perch, you see like little bat like things kind of fluttering up and in, into like your view and then back around and screeching to each other. Oh, Jesus. You notice like four, maybe five. It's hard to say as they like flitter in and out of your view. You recognize them with your excellent perception as these drakling back bats from uh, an earlier session when you guys were breaking through the bottom basement of the monastery. One of these things attacked you with its whip-like tail and hit under a table. These weren't the ones we fed, was it? Uh, did oh, wait, that might have been one? red. <laughs> I don't think so. I think this thing was pretty evil. And it was in like a lab and you guys let it out. Okay. Anyways, uh, those little screechings are followed by a louder roar from a larger creature. Hmm. Okay. Are we on back to like a normal map? Like with the ranges and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, everything is no is more normal now. Okay. And that loud roar, where did it come from? came from this direction. Okay. All right, so as you're looking and you count the drakling bats, like, dipping in and out of the woods, like, you count five, you think. Okay. And they're kind of screeching and then fluttering down. And then you hear, like, a charge and a screech or a roar, more or less, as some sort of reptilian two-headed monster comes barreling between the trees in your view. (laughs) Okay. So you kind of like look down and you see like the reptilian or the drakling bats kind of like fluttering down and screeching around its head and then fluttering off. Are they like fighting it? No. From your excellent perception, it looks like they're like screeching at it. Huh. So well, that's spooky. One moment, because I sketched a picture earlier today of this monster. Where did I put it? There it is. Okay. <laughs> One moment. I'm just uploading a picture that I meant to do earlier. I got so excited for the session, I drew a picture of this monster because I couldn't find any pictures that worked for me. (laughs) So it looks kind of like this. But one of the heads is black and one of the heads is red. Cool. Looks like there's some good meat on that. As you consider what to do next, a second monster comes into view. This one bearing three heads. Oh, God. These two, like, turn and roar at each other. Uh, what languages do you speak? Um, 
not dragon. So <laughs> it just kind of sounds like like uh, hissing and roaring and like yeah, doesn't sound right. But you, with your excellent perception, can kind of guess that they might be communicating. Okay. They roar and spin and kind of run off in this direction with the drakeling bats kind of following. Oh, Actually, um, are we level right. six or five? We're level six. Okay. Because they are my preferred enemy dragons. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that um, would give me any insight to what they're doing, but I definitely don't speak their language. This is not any type of dragon you've ever seen before. Okay. Like this, yeah. The Drakeling bats, you remember where you saw them in previous sessions, but you've never seen anything like this. This is some science experiment shit. And so, these two things are going to kind of like stop and roar at one another for a bit. And they will start to move off northwards. Not at like a stupidly fast pace, but they will keep moving. Okay, I'm going to um, lose a shot at this one. The far left one? The the bat? Yeah. The, okay. I want to shoot at the one that's kind of lingering behind. Gotcha. Uh, yep, go ahead. Is it a dragon? It is... Yes. Okay, so it is dex plus proficiency plus one. That's two for archery. I'm going to do the sharpshooter feed. Okay. And then... So that's a minus five. Damn it. That's such a bad roll. And your arrow sticks into a tree. <laughs> Shit. To roll for the Drakeling bat. See if they know what the heck that was. So we'll say DC 13. And I would think at least one saw that. Uh, roll a D2 for me. Okay, so two saw it. Okay. And they start screeching. Shit! And flapping around. And you see, like, the big ones just, like, turn, and all five heads just kind of spin towards the Drakeling bat that's screeching now and flapping, like, around the arrow in the tree. <laughs> so these ones How long would you say I watched them for before they started moving? Uh, maybe, like, Two, three minutes. Okay. These ones are going to use their movement to move towards the screeching bat, as well as the other ones are going to start flapping in. Are those things flying? Yeah. The big ones? No. Okay. No, they're, they're shambling along the ground. As for my sketch. Okay, I'm going to jump to this tree. 
<laughs> Change right. positions. <laughs> well, I did give you the the. <laughs> and I'm going to spider. do the hide action. <laughs> the flying squirrel cape. <laughs> okay, what does Tolsmir do? I'm going to. Hmm. Natal told me to go to the southwest. The southwest? Yeah, where I was coming from. Okay. So she Actually, starts... maybe, ju maybe just south. South into this tree. And this tree. Okay. Well, this might end very, very differently than I expected. <laughs> I wanted to get it sent back to the group. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what were you saying? I'm sorry. I was trying to kill one and get it sent to follow it. Rah! Change the name of it, that's why. So, as Tolls Mir, where's my dice roller? Uh, books it from the bushes, well, runs from the tree to the other tree. Uh, one of these dragon monsters. Actually, roll a stealth for Tolsmir. Yeah. This shit. Dragon monster notices Tolsmir moving from your tree and roars. And it and all of its companions will start moving in that direction. Rapid pace. Oh man. It's been a real one, Tolsmir. So they can do 60. So you see these, like, yeah, two larger things with their bat companions shrieking around and the bats kind of think they have more movement they do have a little bit more movement we'll start pursuing what does tolsmir do she can react to their movement mm. fucking run more dash away <laughs> all right so, like, what kind of connection can you maintain with Tolsmir? Is she just an animal, or is she, like, your com spirit companion type thing? Like, is there, an like... animal companion? Okay, so maybe you guys have done this before? Maybe Tolsmir's had to outrun um, things in the past? Dogs like to run. Yeah, she knows my uh, smell. Your ammo? Yeah. She'll okay. come back once she thinks she's shook them. Hopefully. So, let's do an athletics and a constitution check for Tolsmere. With advantage, because she's a dog. But she's got to beat 10. She gets my uh, modifiers. Okay. Because um, these bat things are not going to say athletics? Up. Yeah. So. And... Constitution save for endurance. Yeah. Strength is one, and I'm proficient in athletics. You can do these both with advantage, but you gotta be. Yeah, we'll say nine. Oh, oh god. My god. Failed the athletics. What's the other one? Constitution. Just a con save. One was like 
see the yeah, speed and agility that she was going with, and the other was for her endurance. Um, so the dragon creatures scamper off after Tolsmir. What is their the dragon's movements? Thirty. Okay, I'm just wondering because a wolf is fast too. But the drakling bat are forty. Yeah, the wolves are forty as well. Yeah. Um After their first move, I'd like to cast a spell though. Shannon. Okay. What are you doing then? I want to do the the nasty ground. Okay. If I could do that before the. Like when they started moving, I would have did it on my next turn. Okay. Um. And then you can put down where it would be. The Drakling bats will pursue Tilsmere, though. It'll only yeah, they're on the ground. yeah, they can't do anything about that. Oh, just how big was this thing? I think it's forty. Uh, your spiked growth. Yeah. Uh, just closed all my spell index. Ranger. Like growth, it is a 20 foot radius, 40 feet all the way across. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, same idea. Okay. So these creatures, like the big ones, are going to like screech and howl in pain as they push into the thing, and then they're going to stop and pull back and start like roaring. And the Drakeling bats will pursue Tolsmere. Okay. The dragon monsters will not understand what's come upon them and move around this terrain that's, for whatever reason, now hurting them. <laughs> so they will be slow to regain the pursuit. And sore. Yeah, you can roll a couple spots of damage. Yeah, depending on how far they walked through the damage, they take 2d4 every 5 feet. Yeah, so we'll give them like 3 spots of damage each as they charged in. That's like 60 force for each of them. Uh, oh yeah, I I just okay. So that's the first one. Yeah. That's an 11, 12, 13, 14. We'll take it. What's the so second one? So twelve of damage to one, and then fourteen to the other. Yeah. Okay. Twelve damage to the one that was in the back. <laughs> Okay. The three head one you did twelve damage to? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, they will Continue to move to pursue. God damn. You hear Tolsmere running in the distance and the Drakeling back shrieking and everything gets further and further away from you. Um, how far are they away from me? Uh how long do you wait? <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Do I think that he's going to outrun these things? You're hoping. <laughs> oh, shit. Hmm. I feel like I won't abandon him. But it might be a mistake to do that. I'm going to trust in Tolsmere's great running skills. Okay. 
So, time passes. 30 seconds. 45. Minute. Minute and a half. You still hear, like, them roaring. And, like, the sounds of the pursuit is getting further away. These things are ridiculous. Two minutes in, you hear... That's not a good sound. And you hear, like, the, the roaring of the creatures. What do you do? Mm. Do I feel anything? Like, because I have, like, a bond, like, a super tight bond with my pet. But I know if it's dead. Uh, roll nature. You know, wood elf in the woods and trying to sense companion animal. Give me some sort of elf nature. Blah. So you feel as toll as though Tollsmere is severely injured, close to death. Uh oh. Well, I'm gonna go. Out of this tree and go towards where it went. As you come out of the tree, you feel that connection just snap. Uh oh. It's dead. You feel an emptiness. And you 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 know Tolsmere did not make the run. Gonna have to go buy some herbs. Fuck. You hear like the roaring of the the drag the chronic draconic creatures, maybe like three four hundred feet. Uh, no, no, maybe further than that. To to yourself. Should have spot those things. Might have been able to kill them. So, as you're like kind of at the bottom of the tree, like. Like, why? Arr! Like, anger feeling you at the loss of your wolf. You hear, like, a voice kind of on the wind almost being like, Elf, elf, you shouldn't stay here. You should run. Kind of, like, look around over your shoulder there, and you don't see anyone. You just kind of hear, like, the roaring in the south. Gonna say, who is that? <laughs> no time for that elf. Run. They're coming. You hear like another roar back to the south. Hmm. You hear like the voice further away from like this tree almost being like, Elf, you need to move. It's kind of like bouncing. Move, elf. They'll get you. It's this getting further weirdo. away. Okay, I'm gonna move to the north then. Alright, so as you like start running, you hear the voice being like, good, good, come, come, I'll show you. Where were you three minutes ago? <laughs> you see, like, as you're moving through the woods and kind of like bushwhacking and moving towards the noise, like, obviously, you're still on your guard, you're sheen on. You know, ranger of many woods, many fights. But you you feel like like the wind is almost like pushing tree branches in the direction she's like beckoning. Well, I'm gonna follow those tree branches then. So as you move, you hear the sounds of the draconic things getting like further and further in the distance from you. Yeah. Just add a little bit here. And so you eventually kind of come and follow her into like a, a groved shaded area. 
and you hear, that's far enough, elf. <laughs> this is like a yeah. fae thing. Do I recognize this type of voice? So or demeanor? Do, like a nature check again. Okay. Uh, 14. So, like, as you kind of, like, slide into this, like, grove and, like, this tight clearing in this tree almost, it kind of looks like this this one tree has, like, grown into, like, almost a ruinetic circle-type structure. And you find yourself, like, nearby it. Kind of like that. The wood has kind of grown up, and then it kind of goes up into a dome. that makes sense so like a doorway a little bit and so like in that area as you're like looking and like thinking like what is going on here like is this fey like in trying to connect with the uh like the forest you kind of like turn to your left and then you turn back to your right and this creature is just kind of sitting there and she cocks her head and as you get like a good glimpse of her she kind of just jumps back into the into the tree she goes i have not seen one of the people in my woods for so long you can hear her like kind of moving her voice is hopping between different trees So she hasn't seen any humans here at all? Like, not cultists? Not elves. Oh, okay. So I don't know. I was trying to like, she... I can't remember what exactly I said, but she might have called you the people. But by that, she means the elves. That's what the elves call themselves, the people. Okay. Right, because there's a few different species of elves, but they all consider themselves basically better than other races. So, like, what else? Like, protect forests? Is that what they do? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, fey are kind of like spirits in general, and they can be found in a lot of different environments. But forest fey spirits—that's a—that's a big one. Okay. So, like, you shouldn't be too startled by the appearance appearance of some sort of forest spirit Mm. and that's in part like what i was trying to like she's reaching out to you because you're one of the people i'm gonna ask her like what's happened to this forest she goes "Mm, your people left and then i was all alone and then the gnolls came (laughs) <laughs> she kind of like hums to herself she you know she she really is hard she can't keep focus well and she kind of like hums to herself as she talks and then she kind of like she's doing like little spins and like dances around you as after she like answers her question can i ask her what this doorway is for this this is my home the spirit of the tree that gave me life she kind of like hugs it and like caresses it but the gnolls the gnolls you know she like ducks behind one side of the tree and then ducks to the other side they have no respect for the woods not natural those creatures no 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 she looks sad for a second she's like but you're here now Are those dragons with the gnolls? The dragons. She kind of like, like looks quizzically at you, like she doesn't really know what you're talking about. Oh, those things not dragons. The monsters. Yes, they know the gnolls. They talk to the gnolls sometimes, you know. And the gnolls, Mm. they have no respect for the woods. Cut down trees and start fires. She again looks kind of sad for a second. But you're here. She smiles. 
And you'll set this right. Oh, the people always set this right. She kind of like drapes herself over one of your shoulders. And then quickly like teleports to a tree nearby. Yay, you're here now. Did I ask her if she would help me? Help? Fix this. What, what could I do to help? I am Faradine, the spirit of this woods. And I know not how to help you. The people have always helped me. Kind of like looks up smiling. You're the people. <laughs> I'm going to tell her that I'm alone and there's no way I could do this all by myself. You mean you won't help me? She all of a sudden looks like, like traumatized. Like, well, <laughs> you can't leave again. Your people left, and then this happened. You can't leave again. No, no, no. She kind of still, like, as she, like, gets kind of upset about it, she starts, like, teleporting quickly between the different trees. And you see her, like, end in a tree, and you see, like, the bark of her face, like, crying. Like, I'm going to tell her that her I am I'm here to help, now. but I need your help, too. You're going to help? Oh, Faradine can help you. Just tell me what to do. She kind of like teleports back and forth between the trees. Because you're going to help us get rid of the gnolls. Do you have any friends in this forest? Friends? No. Nope, just me and my trees. She kind of smiles up at them. They talk to me, you know. She kind of like runs over to like a little tree. And she kind of like like puts her ear up to it. And then she smiles back at you. He likes you. <laughs> I'm going to pat the tree. Good, 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 good. She's like super stoked about that. And she dances around. So we're we going to stop the gnolls. I can show you where their camp is. She like super happy about this idea. She has no animal friends in this uh, forest. So um... you ask her that. That's why, that's why I asked her if she had any friends in the forest. She kind of, like, puts her eyes down. I did. But not anymore. <laughs> Me the too. Gnolls, the gnolls. They hunt so much, and they eat so little. They just kill for sport. It's not, not natural, I say. And then the rest of the woods. I guess the dragon worshippers took them. Kind of looks sad again at the idea. But you're well, here now. Too. And you'll stop them. She smiles again. I'll show you the way. She kind of like walks and just disappears into a tree. Well, um, she disappears into the tree? Like, she walks and disappears into a tree and then like you see like the tree branch like beckoning you okay over. so she's kind of like in the tree still i could show you i know the forest she steps back out from behind the tree oh fucking shit <laughs> <laughs> i just noticed on my character sheet that my languages include my favorite enemies oh okay <laughs> that's a little too far to retcon. I'm going to follow these branches. I mean, we'll say it was still probably, like, it was probably pretty far to hear them with all the screeching of the, the bats and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to run to the washroom quickly. Let's pause for just two minutes here. <clears throat> Ugh, okay. Over there, boys.
I lost audio for a sec there. What happened? When? Uh, when you said you can understand Draconic. Oh, she... Nothing. She just jumped in a tree and started pointing me in a direction. Coo, coo. I was too far away to hear what they said. Those pointy ears are good for nothing then, eh? Nope. <laughs> I think there was a lot of uh, drakling bat screeching and things happening. <laughs> As I as I think about it in my mind, but um okay, so let's hop back into it. Yeah, after he asked about the, he does speak draconic, but um he was too far away to hear them. But because he speaks draconic, I'm happy to have given him the information that they do in fact speak. Okay. And, We'll go from here. So she's still They'll probably here. talk to themselves with all their heads. Could do. <laughs> um Yeah, okay. So she is here dancing around and I have a token for her actually, but I forgot I forgot to apply it. What the heck is that thing? <laughs> oh, she's huge. She's freaking massive. <laughs> Relax. She's the regular size. <laughs> regular size giant. Regular size foxy nature spirit. Okay. Cool. It's a fox. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, She's happy to show you where the Nulls camp is. And she will, you know, speak to you more. You can see how helpful she is. Uh, God. You, you find it, like, as you talk to her, it's hard for her to, like, keep focus. She'll, like, move around and, like, dance and, like, glance around randomly. So, uh, with my character's knowledge of, like, forest and stuff, I've seen Faye before. Do they usually act like this? Yeah. Okay. This is a pretty common, uh, like, dryad. Like, they're, they're considered, like, wild spirits by your people. And, okay. And your, like, people are very free-spirited to begin with. Like, the wood elves are, like, the most easygoing of the elves. Essentially. Okay. Just making sure she's not like messed up in the head or something. No, this doesn't seem too out of character for a dryad. Okay, I'm gonna follow her um, guidance. So, actually, roll like a, a history or a nature for me. <laughs> My guy's the worst elf ever. <laughs> City born elf <laughs> from New Jersey, man. <laughs> so you like what you remember is is this is not too like yeah you remember them being called wild spirits and essentially you remember in your training as a soldier to like take everything they said with a, a grain of salt they're like whimsical creatures. Okay. Like they're not malicious, but also they don't care about anything too much. As long as I have their forest, then they're happy. Well, I sure wish you had a fey dragon friend that could help me out in battle here. <laughs> That'd be nice, eh? <laughs> it would be, be, yeah. be really useful if I had a companion right about now. <laughs> Half my character's kit revolves around it. But yeah, yeah well, let's let's go fight something. <laughs> I mean you get the sense that you could 
probably find her again now that you know her name. And this is her woods. If you <laughs> wanted to part ways with her, you could probably find her again. She seems to be, as she said, friends with the trees. I'm going to just, uh, before she leads me anywhere, I'm just going to sit and concentrate and see if I can uh, detect more dragons. Okay, so she kind of like dances around you as you like sit cross-legged for a second and focus in and you definitely sense dragons. Um, so I don't know if I can pinpoint their exact area, but I just want to see if I can know where they killed Tulsmere. It feels like to the south west. I don't really know how it works, but apparently in the ranger thing, I could spend like 25 gold and revive my pet, but yeah. I don't know if like I need something of my pet. Like, I don't really know how that works. It's like 25 gold of herbs or some shit. Yeah, let me, let me see. Let me look. I can look that up for you if you want. Yeah, sure. Awesome, thank you. Anyways. But I just uh, wanted to know where it died in case I do need to find the body later. Yeah. I mean, I imagine you have some of Tolsmere's essence. I mean, maybe like a brush with some hair on it or something? Covered in fur from her? Maybe something like that. that. You know, know bone that you she need. shoots on, maybe. Who knows? Yeah. Like, uh... There definitely is dragons to your south, dragons to your north. Those are the big ones. Okay. Alright, well, lead me to the camp. I want to at least know where that camp is. Okay. So... Let's go back. Uh, so let's say that you wandered up to about here. Wait, I gotta zoom in way zoom in. Yeah, so you encountered the monsters maybe here. Oh, no well, more tolls mirror. Where did my right. camera go. Okay, tolls mirror's gone. Right, and so Faradine is going to lead you this direction. Yeah, if I so, can, I put like an X or some crap where her little tree was. Sure. Yeah, you can like, know this area. It's, it's freehand. It's a terrible mark. It's green. I don't, can I change the colors? Yes. So. Blue. No. That shows up really badly, too. But it's a fey color. Woo. Nice. Teal. All right, so she starts to lead you this way, through the woods. And as you get further towards the north, you start to notice some, like, goliath trees. Like, these are friggin' monstrous trees. And again, you're cued into the fact that you... Don't recognize this forest, like, and you're befuddled by it. Faradine is kind of like walking a little bit between trees and then jumping to like the next tree. And she's kind of like just chatting with you the whole time about her forest and about the friends she used to know. What is this forest called? She looks to you, and she says, you don't know this forest? I'm going to say I don't recognize it. It seems changed from something if I would have been here before. So she tells you that this is what your people called the Grey Mist Forest. Grey Mist. And so, like, looking at it, you're like, I, I know the Grey Mist Forest. Like, I've been through here before 
and it had like a vibrant spirit. In fact, this used to be like a retreat for the Wood Elves, maybe, maybe eighty years ago, ninety years ago, before the war on Everesca. Like your people used to come here for like vacation, basically. And yeah, I'm just let some rolls take it over. I mean, <laughs> there's so few of you now, it's hard for you to maintain like all the forests you used to know, especially in the last century. Like, like I said, there's been a lot of war, especially our vacation really... spots. Exactly. So, like, nobody's going to really <laughs> What's the like, top go. Priority? Yeah, exactly. But this forest did have like a crazy vibrant spirit. You can't remember well, much more than that, but I'm going to apologize for our people leaving it. She kind of just like doesn't really acknowledge it. She says, but you're back now and it'll be all good. You'll make it right. And so she'll continue to lead you and like she'll lead you for like an hour, two hours three hours like it'll it seems to be keep keep on going through this woods like the day is, is starting to come towards the end of it how long did you want to hike with her um until she shows me this camp all right do you hike through the night um by the time you get here, it's been like a full day. Get where? Uh, I could stop and rest for four hours and meditate, I guess. Fair enough. Okay. You meditate. Uh, and so like, it's still dark when you finish your meditation. Uh, why can't I pick you up? So, she will continue to lead you, if that's what you would like. Yeah. Perfect. All right, so, so late into the trip. night, as you start to get to the dawn of the next day, she says, we're here. Right? You get going to, to the... climb up the tree stealthily. I'm going to jump, actually, because I can. Alright, so you jump and looking, before you jump, you look up this tree, and it's like 200 feet tall. Oof. Maybe not that tall. Like It's like 150 feet tall. It's a tall friggin' tree. I'm going to take my time and climb this bitch. Alright. I'm going to go at least 100 feet in up okay so you're friggin up there the air is getting thin it is blowing and you look and you see a bunch of like little like teepees around some big log houses and a bunch of woolly humanoid things roaming around it you with me yep all right so you're in this tree and there's all these guys here. Crap tons. Yeah. Yeah, you, you estimate maybe like a hundred. Alright, let's go in. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm the pit boss. King of the gnolls. Jaredine so is... Kill some dragons. As you're like clinging to the tree like a hundred feet up. Faradine's face just appears in the bark, and she says, you see them? And she kind of, like, startles you as she just kind of, her face just <laughs> comes, like, two or three inches out of the tree to, like, smile and then, like, tilt a little bit to look at what you're looking at. Oh, I like see. Like a them. freaky fucking marionette thing. Typical so you're gonna face. Them? You're gonna, uh, you just not play all the dolls. Oh? 
I have friends. Oh, good. Good. More elves. Yes. You'll need them. <laughs> They're not elves. <laughs> <laughs> You'll need friends, for sure. As, like, her voice kind of disappears and her face retracts into the, the bar. And so you're clinging to this tree 100 feet up in the air. What do you do? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna get a good lay of the land and see. What do you got to? <laughs> hmm. So I just um, like use perception and see if I can tell like where the scouts are, like where there would be lookouts. Oh, at in the, the camp? in the fortress, like in the null camp. Yeah. You give me a perception roll. So, from your lookout zone, uh, yeah, I mean, your military training does give you, like, a good indication of, like, who's on patrol and on guard and who's just lounging essentially. And so from that, you can determine kind of their defensive setup. It's primitive, for sure. I mean, they got tools, and they can make a fire, but that's about it. Okay. Uh, battlefield tactics and, and defensive formations are kind of beyond them. From what you're gathering. Okay. But I don't have that part of the game ready so that's all you get. yeah okay <laughs> so i know something of their defenses and i know where their camp is yeah and we'll maybe play on that at another point yeah okay but uh well yeah, you shit can... your vision to the south is much greater than your vision to the north. As you look to the north, the elevation in like the ground goes up and the trees get bigger. Okay. Right, so like it's it's hard to see beyond this line of monster trees. But to the south, from your 100 foot vantage, the trees are smaller and the elevation goes down. Can I see where can I see Several anything uh, to the south any in the direction of where my party went? I mean, you're looking back and you're trying to peer. So, like, do a perception or climb, I guess, higher on the tree. I'm going to go to the tippy top of this tree. And I'm going to jump it. (laughs) (laughs) Flying a squirrel it? That's right. Squirrels and trees are made for each other. Right. So, you kind of make out, like, a clearing over here. That's a good perception rule. Yeah. From where you are climbing to the top of that tree, like you see, see like maybe ten kilometers in this direction, there's like a clearing. The the trees kind of stop. Okay. Your vision kind of falls off. I'm gonna ask the Fay if there's any towns to the southeast, and if she can lead me towards them, because that's where my friends are. Actually, I don't know that. I don't know where my party went. I mean, you know that they started way back here and took a road. We told him where we were going. Down the road. Yeah, I don't think you guys even knew where you were going when you left. No. But yeah, they we they we went to the, to the, the yeah. west or to the east on the road. Mm-hmm. So like, they should be somewhere over here, according to you. Oh, that okay. Right, based on the direction they're traveling and your understanding of the map. Mm-hmm. It's been like a day and a half. Um, and they've had like the they've had to cover like the same distance you have. So like. So I wasn't there when, when we left. But what was the plan of meeting up? Well, you could just track them. 
Okay. All right, and that's kind of why I'm giving you like a good altitude of where, because like you traveled this far in one day or in a day and a half. Yeah. Right, and so they could probably travel. You know, I can't really show you that, but you know, the same Not direction, 110 yeah. feet. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you were to start over here and go 110 feet into the darkness, that's probably where they got to. Okay. I'm going to... Based on that, it's somewhere over here where my arrow is coming from. I'm going to ask her if she could show me a safe way to the southeast while I track my friends. So she frowns, and she's like, you, you're not going to kill Noel now? <laughs> I'm going to say I'm not powerful enough to do it alone. Oh, that's okay. But I'm, I'm going to ask her if she could do a favor for me. All right. So uh, what's your, I guess, roll of pers... No, what's your favor? It's going to be like, can you do a favor for me? Well, I'm gone getting my friends. Can you find some friends to help too? All right, roll a persuasion for her. <laughs> I'd be a bear, damn it! A bear? <laughs> I don't know. Something oh, to be like fight. your new companion? No, just <laughs> something that. Come on, she's this is a huge carnivorous forest. There's got to be some animals alive in here. All right, she's friends with them. Persuasion, he said. Yeah. Charisma. Yeah. Ah, beautiful. A minus one. Damn Perfect. it. She frowns. She says, I, I told you all my friends are gone. And she gets kind of upset at the idea. Did I say, I... not all your friends are gone because I'm your friend now. Oh, she smiles like it beams back at you. Oh, good. Good. And you'll take care of the gnolls. Yes. I'll do yes. my best to look for you. But no promises. Okay. And so you want her to lead you to the south? Or did you ask her about, like, a town? I think uh, yeah, I can ask her if there's any towns towards the south or the southeast of the direction that I think my party's she, at. She frowns and, like, get, like, like a, a flash of anger kind of crosses, crosses her face. She's like, yes, there is humans to the south. And they ruin my forest, too. <laughs> She's not going to like the people I bring. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to tell her that uh, not all humans are the same. Trust me. I'm an elf, and my kind is uh, coming more and more extinct. Not extinct, but... <laughs> uh, no, no, there's but not she... as many of us, so we have to make friends where we can. And then she like kind of thinks about it for a second, and she's like, like me and you, we're friends. Yes. I trust you. Wait, is Troy not human? Uh, there's a tiefling, a half-elf, and oh, Troy's a half elf. Yeah. Gotcha. But, um, she will show you the way to the town to the south. I was supposed to get meat for the party. <laughs> <laughs> she okay. says, What is this term meat? Food. Food? Like berries. I can get you berries. Ooh, I'll take some berries. All right, so on your way, she will supply you with like a, a picnic basket worth of berries. Sweet. And I will grab some twigs and fashion a picnic basket. Nice. <laughs> so you're like tying like these old, you know, dried up flexible sticks into a basket and then she'll fill it with uh with berries and whatnot so you got pretty nice nice haul nice haul of berries for sure more than one person could eat definitely <laughs> could feed five dugans 
basically. <laughs> so it'll take you the better part of the day to trek back to where you saw. Okay. And upon reaching there, it's going to be like late evening. So the sun is kind of setting in the distance. The days are short as... Can I just say... Uh, um, season gets shorter. Like we're, Go on. As we're like going, like every once in a while, I'd just like to take a minute and like see if I can see where those dragons are to kind of see if they like um, like follow a certain path. Gotcha. Okay. So as you're taking your time to sense dragons, you do feel as though they started further down and they are you're sensing them going this way. So do they also they're going towards the Knoll camp? They're going up north. It's hard for you to tell how far over they are, but you get the sense that that they are moving north. Okay, they're not like patrolling or anything. It's they hard just, for you to say. They're walking in a direction. Like the the sensing that you get is, I'm gonna say like within a kilometer radius. So like it's hard for you to sense exact movements within that radius. But if like the radius moves, you can sense that. Yeah. Right. Like they're they're just like a big circle to you. If like if we're doing it in this world. Yeah, it's understandable. I know, like, that move itself is kind of OP. Yeah, like, I'm gonna... It's I'm like gonna five rule it, like, miles, exact number, location. Does it say all that? Yeah, I need to find the page, but yeah. Basically, like, this is your, like, world step, or, like, periscope, and you can kind of, like, oh, boop. Like, there's dragons here, but you can't really get a sense of anything more than that. Like, they're in this kilometer rank. Oh, it looks like they actually released the book that it's in now. I wonder if they changed it. They changed may have. some of the stuff. I'll have to look at that later. Okay, yeah. But we'll just play it like this for now. So, like, say you yep. sense dragons here, and then you sense dragons up here, and then they kind of disappear. Like, they're still heading north. You get a sense that dragons are, are up here somewhere. Oh. Yeah. Eventually, as you move further south towards what you saw as a clearing. All right. To the south with my berries. Cool. So, as the sun starts to set, and it starts to get a little darker, you break the edge of the woods. And to do something like this. No, that's not dark enough. It'll be like that. Uh, can you see these dots? And I'm putting in at the clearing edge. Yep. Those are tree stumps. Ah. Bastards. Oh, no. My tree stumps are getting real bad now. <laughs> Those are fallen trees. Yeah, like... <laughs> but, uh... You see, uh, like, a town. With farmer's fields and, like, uh, buildings and stuff. Little torchlight from the center of the town. Okay. Then I'm just gonna tell her that ah, uh, I think this is where my friends are. I'll be back soon. Oh, you're leaving? She just looks like press fallen. <laughs> I say, yeah, I'm going to get my friends. Okay, then. Hurry back. Okay. I'll be here with the trees. And so, how do you handle this? Handle going into town? Yeah. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> hope this is a nice town.
I'm going to watch it from the forest for a second. See if it's... See what's in it. They have, like, guard posts and stuff? Or is this just, like, a town? You're, like, a kilometer out from the town. Uh, Roll a perception for me. As you're, like, kind of peering out from the woods. So, you do notice, like, what might be a tower here? In the center of the town? Mm Mm-hmm. But beyond that, like, uh, you don't see too much. You notice, actually, a patrol of mounted horsemen kind of ride from this side of the town over and then start going down the main path. So, like, you see three mounted horsemen with riders. Jesus. They look pretty armored. So, like, as you're waiting, kind of watching the sun starts to go down. And all of a sudden you hear a bang. And Whoa. after that, you start to hear, like, like shouting. And from your distance, you can kind of make out people running with torches, like, around the center a little bit. <laughs> what the fuck's going on in there? What do you do? Is that a familiar bang? Is this like a fireball bang? Roll history. (laughs) Damn it. What the hell is history? Is that an intellect? Yes. Okay. You recognize it as one of... It sounds exactly like Xavius's teleportation spell hmm. is one that leaves a thunderclap in his wake oh okay <laughs> <laughs> jesus um well i guess i'm just gonna start walking towards the town uh, i'm gonna strap my bow on my back try to like hide all my weapons and I'm just going to be walking with my berries <laughs> through some <laughs> forest infested with gnolls <laughs> and dragons. <laughs> so as you kind of like stirring yourself up and take a few steps out of the tree line, you hear, yeah, like the shouting and yelling. And you see like maybe four or five six seven torches held by people kind of gathering in the center of the town and you hear somebody yelling out commands at them and then moving towards a horse <laughs> okay. so you maybe walk like 40 50 feet out of the the tree line now you're getting among amongst the stumps but you're uh-huh. still several hundred feet from the town proper just going to keep walking at a normal pace. I'm not going to be sprinting anywhere towards the town with my berries. Hopefully this is a nice town. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to continue walking until I get to town. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Um, okay. Hmm. So. Maybe I could find a guard to point me in the direction of some nice herb shops. Maybe. (laughs) David, are you here? You know that I am. David, 
Would you like to be on the north side of the town? That sounds about where I would be at this time. Okay, then riddle me this. What does Dugan do when he sees Shinon walking across the field with a basket of berries? With a basket of what? Berries. Are you kidding me? No. I rush directly over to this imbecile and pull him into the house that I've been staying at. <laughs> so, Shinon, as you're walking... You know, I, at like the fastest con- pace that I can walk at. Just like consternation quick, quick, and the quick, sun quick, is starting quick, to quick, set quick. in the distance. Actually, yeah, the sun is, is already set behind the trees, like the torches. And you just see Dugan friggin' power walking <laughs> towards you. <laughs> Hi, Dugan. What? Well, what I'm actually pretty world? distraught. I'm not gonna say anything. What in the world do you think you're doing? Um, uh, you guys hear the shouting and whatnot from the city the city center. I'm gonna just, just nod or shake my head and say, "I'll tell you about it later." What's going on here? I heard Xavius's thunder stomp thing. Well, I checked out. So, first off. Everyone else we travel with is allergic to manual labor. <clears throat> Second off, they got themselves captured. Oh, shit. You hear, like, a neighing of, like, a horse, like, rearing up. And, and then you hear, like, kind of feet shuffling and clomping. I like, out the town. Hawking is getting it's... closer to you. Get down. Checked out the town. And it's very clear that they have escaped and they're being hunted. <laughs> okay, well, if that wasn't obvious to you, you really, really need to pay more attention. Can't see that far. What do you think they were doing with a thunderstep? Do you think they were just thunderstepping for the fun of it? <laughs> a Dugan has now, like, forcefully pulled you by the wrist towards, like, the nearby barn. And you guys are, like, crouching next to it. Okay. Gotta hide in that barn. Get in I here. Think... This is a nice fit. Do not bring any attention to them. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's where we end the session for the evening. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that was good. Good times. Times are high. And the bears. I'm very happy to have been as a, in a part of the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. I thought that was appropriate. I was trying to figure out how this would play out. Um yeah. I mean Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is this is appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> that is sick. <laughs> And yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll definitely pick the story up from here, starting next session. Hopefully, in a week or two, we'll throw some days out. We'll get back to it. Sounds good. But uh, yeah, I mean, I could have let you walk into the town, but I'm tired of this party being uh, all split up. And yeah. <laughs> Like, based on where everybody was, this is a totally plausible situation. And Duke Dugan is hungry, right? Those berries smell from a mile away. And <laughs> I was bringing the small child back to his, um, I was bringing the small child right back to his uh, home, which was in the north of the town. Um, That's because true. he That's refused true. to leave me at nighttime. So I said, okay, I'll find my friends in the morning. So this like this lines up exactly with my recollection. Yep, this is him. Put him in. Dennis. This the freaking menace. menace. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what this this kid thought that he could stealth like like we stealth. He's a menace in training. <laughs> <laughs> and then I put in the barkeep that you spoke to last session. Oh, Ooh. he's got some pretty solid actions there. 
Does he? Can I? Did I put that in there? L Whoops. Luckily, we didn't find him. <laughs> Reuben Redtooth. Huh. I'm gonna have to check. retcon my comic and add uh, a mustache. True. Yeah, I guess I should have went from the comic version. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the way Evola is, Nick's got to prepare his bartenders for battle. <laughs> <laughs> you know it. It's hilarious. I slap the barkeep. The barkeep multi-attacks you. <laughs> he takes the tankard and he cracks you with it three times. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed tonight's session. We yeah. got through a decent amount. More happened than I expected. Sure Can't say I expected you to go. fight the dragons. Didn't want to fight them. I just wanted to shoot one. And then get a good track on them. That's fair. Didn't, didn't quite go down that way. No. That's fine. Got Trying through. to put the homing beacon into his flank. Yeah. Maybe. That's something you can do with Hunter's Mark, right? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. You should check out that spell. Just thought it added 1d6 damage. Uh, but, but also, if it runs away, you can track it. It just never comes up because we normally kill the things that you put it on. Damn it. It's a good spell. All right, this it's is only awesome. an hour. Uh, true, yeah. I guess it does wear out. Man, I'm still playing blue again. I got so much in store for you guys. I hope you Hell know yeah! I'm so down. I'm excited. Yeah. Oh, it is a Mystic League mark. Well, it doesn't really say I can follow it. It just gives you advantage on the tracking yeah. checks for it. That's it. Cool. 